Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our very first C Sharp uh, programming tutorial by your host, which is Morex the Coder. Um, so, for those of you who might have been uh, watching my Java tutorials, well, C Sharp is more or less in terms of syntax related to Java, but some of the things are a bit different. You know, there's some few things that change instead of a uh, keyword being a, uh, a low case it gets to be an upper case uh, you will get to see all that um want you guys to just pay attention to that because it will form part of how well you will be able to move around between java and c sharp unless if you're just here learning just c sharp uh well you're cool you're just gonna learn from scratch without having to worry about the stuff you know from java but then if you do want to be a guy or a person that uh, gets to play around with uh, all these languages, well, you can, um, yeah, you can actually do that. It takes a bit of time, though, to get used to all the languages, like the syntax and being able to switch between languages with ease. Uh, it takes time, but if you do put enough work uh, to master your languages, uh you'll get there but enough of that let's talk about what will be covered in this tutorial and yeah so we're going to be discussing or talking about variables uh one might be asking how about the installation how do i get the tools what else i'm just going to stick with using an online compiler so we don't have to install anything we just have to do it online but then if you do want to install something well you can look out for tutorials online on how to do that because i wanted to just focus more on just um, syntax and just teaching the language and the concept rather than the installation pass but if you do need an installation video just let me know and i'll oh i'll figure something out cool so we're going to talk about variables which are the fundamental which is one of the fundamental concepts in uh, java no, in C sharp, I meant uh, someone has been coding too much in Java, I see. <laughs> cool, but yeah, I do apologize for that. So it's fundamental uh, concepts in every language, actually. So I wasn't really wrong when I said Java, but it's every language. Uh, you need variables because these variables, uh, okay, we'll discuss more about them. Let me not read the, the part we're just talking about what we'll be covering. So we'll cover variables which will lead us to discuss the topic of data types then uh we'll discuss how one can actually display information along with the contents that are stored in a variable um to the user and then we can just talk about uh, printing out information without getting information from the user right and this one will lead us to talk about something else because um, our function that takes the input, right, it only returns a specific data type. Now we want to convert that data type to a certain data type that we want. So we're going to talk about the conversion part. And yeah, we'll get there. I know it's going to get a little bit complicated, especially with the float. Uh, but um, I will just do something, uh, something interesting, and then we'll leave it a bit. At the very end so that it doesn't get to be an overwhelming tutorial and yeah i hope you guys are ready and excited as much as i am and if you are then let's get started cool variables what are variables right that's the question that one gets to ask before doing anything more what is a variable so a variable is this is the storage container so this is a container that you use to store values right values of different kinds or different data types which we'll be talking about that at the next slide so this is how we're going to be we're going to transition from um the topic of variables to a different um types of data cool so let's check the syntax of the types or the syntax of the variable oh before we get to the types we have to also talk about the rules of naming our variable right we can't just rush into talking about the types without the rule of naming our variables because you just can't name your variable anything okay you can name it anything per se but then there are some rules that you have to follow there are some characters or some things you're not supposed to have in your variable name cool 
so let's take the syntax right so we have a data type so this is what we're going to be talking about after we discuss the naming rules and then we have the variable name right so this is what we're going to be talking about in the next slide as to how do you name your variable what is it that you're allowed to have in your variable and what is it that you're not allowed to have in your variable then we have an assignment operator we'll talk about this in the second tutorial along with other operators but this is just a an operator that you use to assign a value to a variable you're assigning that value to a variable of a certain data type i hope that makes sense and that wasn't too much so let's head over to the next slide and let's talk about the naming of variables right naming rules for your variable so your variable can begin with any letter from i so it's from a to z right in a to z is i e a to z that letter can either be a small letter or in uppercase it can, can be lowercase or uppercase it can be al alphabet uh a which is capital or small capital it doesn't matter as long as it's starting with an alphabet from a to z it can contain an underscore you cannot start with an underscore but you can contain an underscore right you can contain numbers in your variable uh, they are case sensitive by case sensitive that means that a, a variable with a capital letter of a variable like let's say you have name and then you have name in all lowercase is name and then you have name with capital letter n these two variables are different right that's one of the things that you want to pay attention to they are different cool so it cannot contain any characters like a dollar sign a hashtag a percentage sign you cannot contain that in your variable right and you will see a reason as to why uh, you cannot contain some of the characters like uh, for instance a percentage, a percentage sign is an operator that does something else in your code uh, we'll get to see that in the next tutorial right and last but not least you cannot name your variable the same as the keywords so uh, in java we have keywords right we have keywords which um we use for special functions we cannot name our variable um the same way as um those keywords and then we'll discuss about those keywords when we get to the coding side cool so these are the rules and uh when we get to show i'm going to show you how to declare variable and all that um uh, but what i want you guys to do uh what i want uh, you guys to look forward to is to play around with these rules say for instance you start with an underscore uh you uh maybe um start with the percentage sign uh maybe you um start with uh a number right you can get to explore that and just uh fine, right cool so let's get over to the second slide uh, and we discuss different kinds of data types that we have cool so we'll just discuss just few of them not all of them uh just to keep it simple and to not complicate things cool so we have numeric type so we're going to discuss the um first one which is an integer so we have integer right so an integer is um 32 bits i think and along with 64 bits or bytes i'm not so sure i'll i'll recheck all that so basically an integer right it's a it's a number without decimals it's a whole numbers these are whole numbers then the other one gets to cater for even large large numbers that's the long part of it all right the integer itself it has a certain limit but compared to long an integer can't store or you can't reach a certain number right and then we have um floating point so these are numbers with decimals right so a floating point is a number uh, that has uh, decimals right it is a number that is decimals so we have a float and we have a dump right so these are numbers with decimals right cool so 
let's talk about uh, the text type so the text type is uh, composed of two so we have two types right we have a char uh, this is a string of ASCII values so there's this thing called an ASCII table you can actually search it it's an ASCII table but we're gonna have a discussion about this in future tutorials when we get to fully understand how is it that it's possible for you to compare two alphabets how do you know that this one is greater than this one this one is less than this one right is there in the ASCII table and we're gonna be doing that at a later stage but then if you are that curious you can go ahead as i've said don't limit yourself right explore enjoy right cool then we have a string so a string is just a sequence of characters right it's a sequence of characters cool and then we have a last type which we're going to be discussing which is a boolean and a boolean has either the value true or false right uh cool so let's head over to our jdoodle.com so that's where we're going to get our compiler so it's jdoodle.com and once you get there uh just click on it i'm not gonna sign in i'm just gonna use the series then i want c sharp so it's c -10. and then what i want to do is i want to click there just to have a nice view but then if you prefer that view you can use it this way i prefer using um this right cool then uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna clean all this because we don't want to start with uh, too much mess. We have to break it all down just so that it makes sense, right? Cool. So now, here's the first thing, right? So the first thing you do before coding in C Sharp, you have to set up the environment, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to set up the environment first. Uh, I will explain how you actually set up an environment at a later stage so the approach that we're going to be using in, in terms of learning this language is that we gonna learn from the inside first then we're going to come to the outside as to how you actually set up the coding environment before you start coding because if i start with that i guarantee you uh, we will create more mess because people will be lost in not fully understanding what's happening so it's better if we start by just the simple concepts to learn and then as you get further and you get further and you get challenged and you develop a mentality of a coder or coding mentality then you will find it easy when it comes to the explanation of the setting up of the environment cool so so this is how you do it right it's name is using system so we're going to be using that namespace system uh we'll get to that namespace so this is our namespace we're just going to call it more xd coder cool then inside we're going to have a class let's we'll just call it more x then inside we're going to have a main method static uh void main so those ones in java just take note that in java that is small letter in this case it's a cap it's in uppercase right and then we have um string again do pay attention to that this is all in small letters right in java it's in caps and then we have our main method right so this is the setup and we can confirm if everything is right by just executing uh there we go so you see nothing right there's nothing there so that means that we have successfully set up our environment and we can start coding right so as we mentioned we have an integer right it's an int and then uh, uh two slashes this is a command right your compiler is not gonna check for that it's just gonna this we got that right cool um hey i was wondering what's happening so we had let me just execute this first and see what happens oh cool yeah i had an extra uh calibrace which i don't know where it came from but yeah 
cool so we have int then we have long right so this has still int so this is still a whole number right whole number as i mentioned and this is still a whole number as i mentioned right then we have um the floating point so we have float then we have double right and then we have string characters we have char then we have a string then we're gonna end with the boolean which is just a binary value or a binary type with only two values is either true or false one or zero cool so let's start with the number right so the way you declare a variable number right so it's just int so this is the data type right this is the keyword for the data type and you will recall from our discussion of naming variables that you can't name your variable the same as the keyword right is a number and then you have number right and then you assign it a value 50 and that's it right if you execute this our execution should be successful and it is successful but we get warnings right we declared the variable but then we didn't use the variable we're gonna forget about the warning so we're gonna get a whole bunch of those warnings because in this part of this video we're not gonna be using the variables but just declaring the variables cool and then we have a long so that's the keyword long right and then it's number two or number one and then i have 60.9 but then how do i ensure that my compiler knows that this is a long so you can just use a capital letter long or a capital letter l this is to specify that this number is a long right it's a long number and we execute that uh, we have that and then it says unexpected l um let's use a small letter then um oh an unexpected l wow why doesn't want us to do that okay i guess we can't do that on this one so let's just run it like this um missing a cast what am i me why am i missing a cast there so two let's do this um let's see ah it succeeded okay so uh basically i should have started by discussing about the casting before we get to this because uh we are converting from one value to another value uh but i will cater this in future tutorials but what we have is uh we have um we have um a long right we have a long and then we declare a variable then uh we cast right so when i convert so this is an integer or this is a float uh it's double actually oh no i think i understand why uh, let me go back because this was not the topic that i was supposed to discuss so it's l right if we do this our compiler is gonna succeed yes and i do apologize for almost misleading you there so i was converting a floating point to an integer we're not going to be discussing about casting at this point so uh yeah do forgive me on that part i was moving way too fast cool so this is an, it's still an integer it's still a whole number but then you want, just want to specify that this is of a long time right it's a long time cool um let's go to a float uh, float and then we have decimal decimal one because that's a keyword in c sharp so it's decimal one and this is also part of what we have you can have a number in your variable name right and then we'll provide 60.99 space no it's semicolon and then we execute our compiler fails because float we have to use uh this we have to specify that this is a float right because we have a float and we have a double and uh it's the same case as well with uh long and int right this one can so with this one the difference is that the the, the double one can take more decimals than the float the float is just going to carry some decimals if you have way too much decimals than the data type can handle right so 
that's uh basically that's basically it and yeah cool let's head over to double so it's double decimal two and then we have uh 80.36 and then we have to specify that it's a double and we execute as you see the warnings are at four now so the warnings keeps on rising and rising and rising because we are just declaring variables that we're not using um so yeah we get to that uh, let's get to char so this is just a letter right and the way you define a letter is that you're going to use a single code a single code then an alphabet it can be in uppercase or lowercase and then you have um semicolon to end your statement and there you go we have five warnings since we have declared five variables which we are not using then we have a string name and then this one makes use of double quotes and let's just name it more x the coder and um what i will advise is to use uh use your name your pf name your girlfriend name or someone that's special to you just use whatever name you that you have in mind but you can even use your name because this makes it easy for you to have fun while you're coding cool let's head over to a boolean so it's bool and then we have status right status and then say we just want to have a true so that's just that so it can either be true or false right that's what you have and then we execute and everything is executed and we have successfully uh declared seven data types we just these cast now let's go discussed about handling the output displaying information on screen are you ready let's go displaying information right so the way we do that is we have a namespace called a uh, system inside that system we have um, a console class which we can access we can access the console class and inside that console class there is a method of writing a line this is a method that we use to display information and in between there it's a value right so that value can be of different data types which we discussed from uh declaring a variable you declare a variable and use an assignment operator to store that value of that specific data type to a variable and the other method which i want to discuss is the right method right is the same syntax just that instead of right line it's just right the two the difference between these two methods is you might have uh, suspected you might have had a question is that with this one it ends line after so it prints whatever that it prints and then it moves to the next line this one doesn't move to the next line it prints and it stays in the same line right cool so let's head over to our compiler and let's get started let's start it let's start to print this all, all this right so we can get rid of all these warnings one by one console dot right line right then in between it's a value right it's a value so I'm going to start with just a string and then I want to say number cool and then what I want to do is I want to print my number right so I used a plus sign which is a concatenation sign in this case because I'm dealing with strings I know this is not a string but then in this case what's going to happen is that this string is going to be added so this is going to be appended to there and that is going to be displayed there on terminal and uh, we can execute and see if we are doing the right thing or the wrong thing yes we execute it as you will see we have one less warnings now and this is what happens it print out our number right let's uh, do the same thing for for number one uh, so it's um right line Cool. And then we have number one. Number one, right? Cool. Let's execute. And we have that. I'm pretty much sure by now you understand. 
printing. I know it's quite new, but then it's not that complicated, which is why I wanted to just so that we can cover the last part and make the video not that long. Cool. So we're gonna get there, and uh, what I would advise is for you guys to just practice. Um, so just practice, 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 practice. You can just pause the video and um, do the rest on your own, and then continue with the video, and then you'll be marking yourself if you did the right thing. Besides, your compiler is gonna tell you, so you can just rely on that one. And we're just gonna continue. I'm just gonna copy and paste and edit what needs to be edited. Um, no, I'm not executing anything. Uh, so this is decimal two. This is decimal two. There we go. Okay, thing like copying is not helping me that much. Console dot right line. Let right and then it's letter. Letter, 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 right? Cool. And then we go to um, name console dot right line, Ooh, right line. And then we have name. And then we have name, right? We have name, right? Cool. And then we have console dot right line we have status status right and let's execute get some errors no errors wow i don't even know how we got that but there we go and this is this and you notice that this is in caps let's see if we put in caps what happens will it execute or will it not execute oh it doesn't execute so it's supposed to be in small letter, that's the true, or that's the keyword for the value that you can assign to put in like a true or false in small case. But then when it prints, it's going to be in upper case. Right? Cool. That's what we have. And we got rid of all those warnings, right? And this is you displaying information to the user. Uh, you might have noticed that I've only used the right line without the right. So we can execute, we can just do that there right and then we write right and then if you execute um you will see that this it prints that it doesn't go to the next case it stays there and then the next part of printing is there and then it's just gonna print so to get rid of that so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have this right so this is gonna end line and start on the new line right i will talk about escape characters in uh, future tutorials but that's basically the right and the right line right not that complicated not that difficult to understand and i do believe that it makes sense cool so now let's go and head over to the last part of this tutorial um okay so we have a bit of slides i thought i only had one slide but we have two okay cool so we're going to be talking about getting information from the user now that we have uh, displayed information to the user how to get information from the user right so we use the same uh, name uh, we use the same class console and then we're going to have a method called read line it just read lines and then there's nothing inside the parenthesis it's just read line cool uh, but then one thing that I want to discuss before I move to the next uh, discussion is that this value or this red line, what it returns, it's a value. It returns a value. This value is of a string type or it's a string value. So now this leads us into discussing uh, conversion or converting a, from a string to our desired Type. So we want to convert it to an integer, we want to convert it to a float, and all that, right? We can do that at a later stage. We can do that and explore, all right? Cool. So let's head over to the uh, conversion methods, and um, we'll discuss about that, right? So we have um, this, this method is more of explicit method. So you are explicitly converting from a, one data type to a different data type. 
I will talk about the implicit uh, type at a later stage, but then that's just an automatic conversion. Uh, I will talk as to how these two differs and why do you get to have two explicitly convert from one type to the other type and not just have it automatic, right? We'll never talk about that. So this is um, converting to um, a string. So you're converting to int and then you specify the size, right? You specify the size. If it's 32, that's an int. If it's uh, long, it's 64, right? Is to int 64 so it's the same thing it's int but then you specify the size I mentioned that the other side the other type can have large numbers than the other size right so the int can have smaller size or smaller numbers compared to a long time cool and then you have a boolean so it's convert to boolean and then you have char convert to char and then you have double convert to double now one might have a question as to how do you convert to a float uh we'll have a talk about that uh, in the future tutorials but if you would like you can attempt to play around with uh that and just try convert to double and see if the method is there or not uh we'll discuss about that is okay we can actually try it out when you code so let's head over to our coding site and what i'm gonna do is i am gonna remove all this so that we have a clean cool right cool so the first thing is converting to an integer right that i'm just gonna go with how we have our slides lined up right cool integer reading an integer reading an integer right Cool. Um, you know we have integers, and then it's num, and then we have this. So when you read, it's console dot read line, right? The read line. But now we want to convert this, so this returns a value of a string. Pay attention to this part because this is a part that might confuse you but we'll repeat it over and over and over just to make it more easy to understand, right? So this is the value that you have. Now you wanna convert this value into what? Into a different type, right? So based on those conversion type, you've noticed that the syntax is convert dot to int. To int, oh int and then i specify the um the size the two right and then open parenthesis and the close parenthesis whatever it's inside there it's a value so this is a string value right and uh we can execute this and see if it's gonna make sense or not it succeeded with error but then because we didn't use that right but then um, one thing that I want to mention is if we were to try to display this information, um, say console dot right line, and then we have num, num, right? We have num, right? If we have that, if we have that and we execute, um, it says zero. So we didn't provide any input the default value is zero so if you provide the input say 50 right we expect it to be 50 right and it's 50 that's how you read your input is it complicated less complicated or it will make more sense if we repeat the whole process again and again and again let's continue right um cool so let's read um reading a long int a long int right so it's long num2 convert now you know this uh, to int 64 right and then it's console dot read line and then we have that right 
and then we have console dot um right line and then we have um num2 and then we have num2 right cool so just say 6000 and we execute cool so that's your num2 which is of long type and you provided the first input and the last output right cool uh let's also do this for um, say uh what are we doing it for now again so we did the int the long okay let's go to a double oh no let's go to a boolean first cool so we have uh a bool status right and then you have convert dot to boolean boolean and then we have console dot read line right read line and um let's print console dot write line and then we have status right Status, cool, and then we provide the input for that. Say it's true, and we execute. Uh, and then our compile. Uh, we made a mistake there, so that's a syntax error. So it's supposed to be cap L, not a small letter L, right? And then it's true. That's the status, right? So if you want a char, it's the same thing char right so it's char letter and then we have convert to char console dot read line let's display that console dot write line and then we have a uh, letter letter right there we go and um just provide b right so there we go we have b so we discussed both of the integer values uh boolean and char let's go to um let's go to uh, double Double right, double num. Okay, let's just call it decimal or this, and then it's convert to double, and then it's gonna be console dot read line. That's with line right and then we have uh, console dot right line then we have this uh, and then we have that right and then we um, provide that 30.66 and let's see it executes now let's discuss this last one float cool so how do you do a float right how do you do a float do you use uh do you use um convert dot to float will that allow you right Will that allow you? Cool. So that's the question that I'm leaving for you guys to go figure out. Uh, first thing in the second tutorial, we'll discuss about that, right? We'll discuss about that. 
um for now i do hope that you guys enjoyed the video and please do continue learning and please don't be disencouraged on how you start for instance if it's hard for you to understand or it was hard for you to follow through do rewatch the video and rewatch and rewatch uh nothing is to be learned uh on first time right some people get to learn from the first time but then um for some it takes a bit of time right so for some you might learn it uh you might get it on the third time or the fourth time right so keep learning and don't count yourself out as of yet just keep learning keep working hard and you will get to a level where you understand and hey you might even host your own youtube channel uh helping others as well explaining the concepts in your own uh way to make it easy for others right so never look down on yourself believe in yourself and uh keep the drive keep going regardless of how hard it gets to understand some of the concepts just keep going and um yeah i will see you guys in the next tutorial and i do hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial and uh, if you did leave a like and a comment and if you are new do leave a subscription or do subscribe and hit the notification bell because uh this is the beginning right once we start we don't stop uh so every week friday we'll be having our c sharp uh videos along with java okay I'm, i decided to just release these two on the same day because they are more or less the same in terms of the syntax so in terms of me switching between the two it's quite easy i can actually do all of them but uh to keep it more simple and easy to learn i'm just gonna keep it that way so if you're new to the channel just know that on monday every monday uh we have python i'm planning on what i'm gonna be releasing on monday along with python as well tuesday c and c plus plus uh, and then Friday we have um, Java and C Sharp. I think somewhere around Thursday uh, might come up with something because I'm missing JavaScript and HTML. I think I will get the day for those uh, somewhere around there. So guys do enjoy and have a lovely weekend. Don't let the Friday Friday you eh? <laughs> So yeah, do guys have a lovely day and enjoy and happy coding everybody and let the code be with you. Until we meet again in the next episode of C Shop Programming.